Hey everyone, Steve Severs for Bionic Buzz. We're here at Consumer Electronics Show 2019. We're here on the showroom floor. Let's go see who we can talk to. Okay, Andy Davis, Director of Marketing. We're on Display and Expo at 2019 here at CES. Whoa, can you give us a tour of everything you got going on here? Absolutely, absolutely. So, why don't we actually start right here. Yeah. So, this is obviously Oculus, the Oculus headset for, for VR. A lot of people have been asking us, you know, since we launched with the wireless, enabling the wireless headset for Vive, yes. people have come to us and said, what about Oculus? Well, this is not a product that's going into market yet. This is actually um, a demonstrator. So we built a reference design. We, it's the same reference design we used actually when we went to uh, originally get together with Vive. Mm -hmm. What we've done here is we've adapted it to be able to work with Oculus. So in the demonstration behind us, we've got the ability to be able to run either with the Vive, the Vive Pro, or Oculus. So this contains actually DisplayNix DL8020 chipset. The new 8000 chipset targets all uh, VR devices to enable them to be wireless VR. And it can be done in a way where it's literally just an add-on adapter. So rather than change the entire headset, we've built these in a way that you, know, you can retrofit and, and this enables us to show off here what could be capable with Oculus. Now again, let me just point out, not a product that's in market, yeah. demonstration platform, but you know, here working live at the booth here at CES. Oh, what else? Where, where should we get it? So why don't we go over here because behind us, what we've got is multiplayer. Oh. Um, and I arrived just at the time when there's no yeah, one there. <laughs> is that always the way? So the, the, the cool thing about this yeah. is that um, the Vive Pro headset, you know, a lot of people said, is this even possible with the Vive Pro? Now the Vive Pro headset actually lifts and increases the pixel count by about 78%. Wow. So you take the Vive, 78% more pixels going wirelessly, that's a real challenge. Now the other thing you've got to remember with VR is when everyone's moving their heads around, ducking and diving, bobbing around, the bandwidth up and down is, con is continuously changing. Oh, I mean, if you think about that, yeah. As that changes, we've got to be able to dynamically adjust on the fly. So this is what's special about DisplayLink. We have a dynamic compression uh, algorithm that runs behind this. It literally moves on the fly in lockstep with as bandwidth changes. So you can go from full bandwidth to almost nothing. We will change our compression in real time so that the user doesn't know this anything at all. And remember in VR, you don't have an option to say, I move my hand and then suddenly you see the controller move. Yeah. That's just not acceptable. Our brain just doesn't accept that. Our test platform for this was going out and saying to people, you know, juggle the controllers. And people looked at us and said, what? <laughs> juggle the controllers? Is that even possible? Yeah. Is my motor cortex in my head actually going to enable me to catch that device? And it really does. And that's what enables us to be able to play multi-user multi VR gaming. And of course, you know, DisplayLink, really what we do is we drive enterprise solutions. Why gaming? Well, gaming really sets the bar at the highest possible level. If you can run around and kill zombies, you're good in enterprise. Yeah. So from that point of view, we're pretty golden. Now, why don't we go over here and I'm going to show you something which a lot of people have been asking us about on the enterprise side. This is a solution for productivity. So what we've got here is actually a, a new MacBook Air. Oh. So this tiny little guy here is a MacBook Air. Now, that's a MacBook Air? That's a MacBook Air. Now, would you ever imagine in a million years that a little MacBook Air will be able to drive three 4K screens? Whoa, I would love to be able to edit on that. <laughs> so the nice thing about this is you'll see there's only this one cable. We've got one cable here coming out of this dock driving three 4K screens. These are three 4K P60 screens over a USB cable. Now, here we're driving USB-C. This is a Dell dock. It's the Dell D6000 dock. It's actually charging this device at the same time. Oh, cool. So, really, you know, we talk about one cable to rule them all. This is what it looks like. <laughs> so, this environment is a beautiful environment. Three 4K60. We could expand that if we really wanted to. On the other side of here, we have a chipset launch for our DL6910. Oh, now, if three 4K60 wasn't enough, well, let's go to four. All right. People have said to us, let's shake it up. Let's move from three screens to four screens, and let's take that up to have four 4K60, which gives you that kind of day trader environment. Oh, my. yes. Look at so this. what we have here, and we're really lucky. We, we work very closely with Targus and a number of partners. Mm -hmm. This is yet to be announced, so you're seeing this right at the forefront. This is the forthcoming Targus Dock 570. You'll see at the back here four DisplayPort connections. These four connections are driving four 
3840 by 2160 P60 4K displays. Yeah, talk about multitasking. Absolutely. You know, I mean, if, if you want to be able to see and be more productive, that is the desktop that you dream of having. Super nice, really easy to be able to work with. Now, let's go over here for a second because we wanted to change things up a little bit more. A lot of people have come to us and said, you know, DisplayNix technology is really cool, but what about signage? Yeah. Signage would be a nice idea, but the problem with signage today is a lot of people use it over what's known as HD Base T. Mm -hmm. HD Base T means you've got to complete, completely put in a whole new network infrastructure. That network infrastructure means that you're relaying all of your Cat5, all of your Cat6 cables, and that's going to cost you an awful lot of money. Yeah. What we've done is we've taken the ability to build a device that can run over a standard network. So what you see going here is standard Cat6. This would be your standard building network infrastructure. Each of these devices can then drive either one 4K screen or multi HD screens. So you can see how crisp that is. It looks yeah. absolutely beautiful. These are three 4K displays running P60 as a signage solution, and it's totally scalable. Now, the thing you'll also realize is there's no power going into these devices. Oh, really? These are running PoE, power over Ethernet. So that entire device is being powered over the Ethernet cable from a PoE power over Ethernet switch. Now, in your, in your head is probably, all right, well, can I go beyond three, Andy? You know, how, how far could this go? Yeah. We knew people would ask us this question. So over here, oh. we've taken this to a wall of 16 displays. It's kind of as many as we could fit in that area. Yeah. We've kind of lost you know, the space left and right. But what you see here is these exact same devices. And now on the left-hand side of that device, you'll see two HDMI ports coming out. Okay. Yeah. Each of those two HDMI ports is actually driving two of these displays. So you, one here driving one display, the other one driving the other display. So what that means is for these 16 displays, we can drive them all just over eight of these boxes. All of that can go into a standard network switch. That standard network switch can sit on your standard network infrastructure. You're not incurring huge costs, and you've got the ability to drive a display wall just like this. Now, to make it a little bit of fun, what we've done is we've actually got a camera the other side of the booth. Okay. That camera is delivering a live feed to the wall here. So as this moves around, it's got some obviously some signage data yeah. going up here. It will flip over and give us a camera view. So when that comes up in a few minutes, what we'll do is we'll show you just how good the latency is. Now this is super concept. Mm -hmm. You know, I've got, to, I've got to again highlight what you're seeing here is a very, very first look of something showing as an early concept to get feedback from the market. This is not something we're selling as a, as a product or we're promoting with partners yet as a product. Um, but this is something we wanted to bring here to CES, show people very, very first look of and get some, get some initial feedback. So hopefully now this is going to come up and show me with, uh, with the camera feed. Oh, there we go. go. So there's the camera feed. There's my arm in the air. You can see I'm waving around. And that's giving a live feed right from the other side of the booth in real time to where we're standing right here and filming this, this sketch. <laughs> uh, it looks so crystal clear. There you go, absolutely. Now, is that just one camera too? That is just one oh camera to living this feed. Wow. And what do you know now we've come around here, the entire wall's yes, now up. Now it's rough so we can show this. This is now the Vive Pro. Mm -hmm. This is running at full resolution. You can see as he swings his arm around in real time, he's swinging around that malice. He's going to wipe heads off these guys. So much fun. Yeah, so much fun. This is where you relieve all of your stress from a day at CES. It's so smooth. Like I said, other VR have done, it's like usually a delay. Oh, you, you know? absolutely don't know this anything at all. We've, we've put this in front of pro gamers at shows like E3, yeah. and people just don't notice the difference. The key thing that you do notice, however, is that you've not got a cable tying you down. When you go through 360 degrees of the motion perspective, you're not going to tie yourself up in knots. No, that's good. Well, this is amazing. Uh, thank you so much. Anything else? Or are you I, I think that's enough. So, well, where can we see today, uh, website-wise, everything uh, going on? Um, so, people can see this at displenic.com. We have a lot of information up there. Please go visit the website. If you're here in Vegas, come down to see us here at CES while we're here. All right. Thank you so much, Andy. Thanks very much.